side. They do have the two smokes to open things up, but Zipex is going to be there, and he is just waiting to take some heads off. Yeah, this is his prime position. This is exactly where you want Zipix to be. Very hard to take out, and they're not closing him down quick enough. Already, Sonic will fall to Dupree, and it leaves Floppy alone. But he's turned it down into a one versus two. Spots out device now and has the information of where both players are. Looking for that individual duel, he'll get it. But Glaive's going to take the win. Slowly making their way around Banana. Going to flash out, and there's actually no support for device. He should be going down. Nothing that he can do there. It seemed like Dupree was meant to be oh. having a peek and through the smoke. Okay, JT. He's given them a two-man advantage with 30 seconds to get into this site. The full rotation coming in from the B side, but that means there's nobody left to try and defend. Zippy gets in quick enough, but he's only for a one-for-one -one trade. They have managed at least a little bit of extra damage onto two of the remaining players. So there is still a possibility here, but still just one-for-one. -one. Good work from Cloud9 to trade out every single one of these kills. And now the IGL Glaive left in a one versus three. Looking to try and round this corner. Does manage to find Sonic, but the dual peak coming out from Cloud9 works wonderfully. Made though, already kicking things off. It's going to be that Galil staying forward. Lots of damage done, but it's still going to be JT getting the opener. He's been doing very well at that in these last few rounds. He gets Magisk as well. He's only on 25 HP, but he's just completely ruined that B site. And what was looking like a fantastic start from Astralis, two players tagged ridiculously low, has already turned into a save. And really try to, to bring this momentum. Like, yeah, everybody's on their spot, be it through qualifiers, be it through ranking. A little bit of luck with visas. Yeah, that too. <laughs> but they're, they're the one exception. But, you know, here's the start, Dupree. Again, it's going to be lots of early damage. They tried to go towards this B site in the initial start of the round. And he's this time got a kill and damage modem to it within inches of his life. In fact, he's going to burn to 6 HP. And Device gets further aggressive. To get one more, this is looking like a much better round for the Danes, and those saved weapons from the previous round are the ones really doing the work. I mean, out of the five rounds we've now had, well, I guess technically the six with this one, I think they've basically gone B every round except maybe one. So eventually, as Charles were bound to just stack up on the B site, you still have Dupree in a perfect position to just mow down these three players about to come in through Monster. Both be the first one. He's going to fall, and Sonic will return. But Zipex will be there to help secure it and get Astralis put their foot down and and just continue things the way they know how, which is winning. <laughs> oh, oh well, this is how they know how to get kills, through smoke. That <laughs> seems to be the, the special oh. at the moment. In fact, another one for OC. That's two trade back. That's given them an opener. The rotation's in quick, though. They might think this site is a little bit cleaner than it actually is, but Device is well placed. He's got Zipix to support. JT's the only healthy player left, and he's gone within seconds. OC, the only man to get two kills. Not seeing either of his opponents, of course, but with 15 HP, unless he's about to completely destroy Zipix through the box, I don't think he has much of a chance There's in this no clutch. smoke down, so it's not gonna happen. <laughs> I mean, that's how many kills we've seen now through smokes out of Cloud9, now, like at least four. And Device will pick himself up a triple, glue in there. And he'll start picking up some kills, and unfortunately, it's not working <laughs> no. out for him. The smoke's working against Cloud9 for once, and Magus gets himself a clean double. Yeah, this is where things start to get a little bit. You're just not going to be able to take these rounds through. And, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, no, I should hold on to that point as it starts to push through yet again. Another smoke. JT gets the first kill onto Glaive. A nice flash pin comes through, but it actually works out against Cloud9, holding them back. And Magus is going to be there, and he's going to get himself another two kills. That's a quad kill in that round for him. Him is they can now just bolster this B-side ready for any sort of take. Solo and health down to 16 HP. In the meantime, the rest of the players of Cloud9 are trying to push through Monster. Now a little bit staggered here as Magic gets two and Glaive gets one. Now it's down to OC and Sonic. Two versus five. Not the greatest positions either to really do too much damage. We know that over towards short, Sonic has pressure coming in from Connector. Even a flank potentially coming through. And a Shoss again, not losing. They've put Glaive now into the more aggressive positions over on the A site. And again, again, they just seem to be in the right place at the right time when it comes to what Cloud9 want to be doing. I really want to see Zipex continue to kill people through the wood. Because then you can basically say, yeah, you guys can see through smokes and get kills. Well, I can see through the wood and get kills. I can see through walls. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah it's a little... <laughs> Well, it looks like Clown will be set up for a B-side hit, though. Look how many players of Astralis are currently here waiting for it, though. Device is going to be trailing towards short. Zipex there as well. The flash pin comes through to allow them to get out. But the problem is Device is still there, and he gets himself two quick kills. Zipex gets another as well, and Astralis is going to take the 11-4 for the last few months, starting off with the uh, Pro League. And now we're going to see them try to go for the retake on the B-site. They do have JT with a kit, so they do have the opportunity to play out time. But will they be able to take down Glaive? Does he just come jumping around the core? He gets his first, but OC's going to shut him down and just trades equally across the board. I wonder if they'll expect 
Device, however, he's going to be waiting patiently out towards Long Dupree on the side, goes down to Floppy, and there is Device, he's been spotted. Still, we stick in a 2v2, but clearing out this long position is going to be difficult, and they're hunting him down. They don't know where Magisk is, but he can't connect any of the shots. It's going to be left all onto Device. He's going to deny the defuse for now, and just going to be waiting patiently for OC to try and push him. Fake Flash, even baiting out OC. Device has this all day long. But slow to start here to kick off the day. Nice little shot out of JT. That's a second of the round. Looking for number three as well as Blade peeks around the corner. Not quite able to hit the shot, but he's going to stick around looking for more. And Zipex is eventually going to overwhelm him, just jumping into the air. There's a chance here for Cloud9. They have the man advantage. Give him the information of them running, and I think they now have the perfect positions to try and deny anything. Molotov going to be flying in to try and clear some of the closer angles. Smoke onto the site, but they've got to deal with Sonic. But he doesn't hit his shots, and both go down. Zipix within seconds, but Floppy, perfect timing. He'll get the double off the MP9. The Fault Spy is going to be won by Cloud9. We see the polar opposite for Cloud9, just going to be trying to build those finances up as much as possible. Nice little crossfire set up here, too. Device is going to... How? This device. Ow. It's on 22 kills. Yeah, but that was a Glock versus M4. Oh! Got four players there, and you have OC to rotate back for help. Floppy's playing up close towards Monster. 20 seconds left, and the Shaws have to make the push, and the Shaws get two kills as well. They're only going to trade one back for Cloud9. It's going to be Sonic, and now Modem trying to play over towards the pit position. Has to worry about Dupree pushing up, shuts him down. 14 seconds left on the clock, and he's eventually gonna fall to Glaive. And Magus will get the bomb in towards Sight, but OC's gonna respond with Ooh. one. The nade comes through, and ah, doesn't do that much damage, but now it's a two on two. Yeah, and OC's so desperately low. JT's gonna have to do a lot of the work. Magus peeking around the angle, he's gonna lose the battle, but Device, he's got such an HP advantage over OC in this scenario. He's going to have to come down to almost baiting Device into a peak, and we've seen him in these clutch situations before. He's going to scope to try and make him not believe he's defusing the bomb. He's sticking it all the way. It comes down to the fire, and Device takes it within a millisecond. That Cloud9 we normally get earlier this round is going to be Astralis making their play into the B site. Flop, he is in the right position with this AWP, just watching for anybody to cross, but he misses his shot, and that's pretty much round over. And it's going to be Sonic rotating in, but he's closed out very quickly, and now Floppy, he has no choice. He's just got to save this up again. I mean, if you're a Charles to even plant the bomb right now, just like chase him down, get some people set up, <laughs> you know where he is, you know where he's going to run, you know it's an AWP, and look at that, Zipix already in the prime position to drop him. Floppy, he's going to have to hit a couple hell of a shots to really have a chance to maintain this, and there you go, walks around the corner, Zipix drops him. Astralis seem to be going, it, it relies heavily on OC finding this kill, and he does, peeks around, but Magisk is so quick to get that trade, and already quite far into the site is going to be Dupree, not made his way through the smoke just yet, so Floppy has been able to rotate in, and Sonic is about to join him. JT's still, oh he's behind them, but he's maybe a little bit too slow, you're going to have Magisk there to help watch it as well. Bomb would be planted towards the A-side. Sonic gonna push through the smoke. It's his head cleanly taken off by Dupree. And finally, JT's arrived, but just into the open arms out of Magus. Now it's all on modem and a one on three to save the map at the moment for Cloud9. And yeah, it's not gonna happen. Charles will take the victory at 16 to 7 and go into the second map of train up one to zero. Tom. Of this B site, there's gonna be a man of floppy just waiting. <laughs> Doesn't manage to connect. A shot onto Zipix, he gets the opener, winning that long-range battle with the Glock, and that is the Swarm already so far forward. Look how much map control they've gathered, Jason. It is going to be another kill, quick trade at least, but Dupree's still here. He's still just holding this angle, and is, is he really going to go even further? I mean, he's got their kit too. Time's just being taken away. Sonic's going to take Dupree down, so they'll be able to recover the kit, but now pushing in 2v3 with so many angles to clear. I don't see this as being possible for Cloud9. Monomi needs to hit this shot, but unfortunately, Zipex will get the kill against him, and now Sonic can't quite connect either. The solo bank, uh, uh, anchor even, not the banker. Although, if you combine the two, he would be the banker. And even going to try and uh, make some money as he goes. I am worried, though, for Cloud9. Investing into this double op is it's so risky. High risk, high reward. If you can get those kills and build up some you know, economy to continue. Great Ooh. nade coming through. Magus gets... Drop down to 50 HP, but if you lose with a double op setup, then you know the, the monetary investment that you just use is completely out the window, and you can't stabilize. Device gets the first gun to OC. That's one off now. Down floppy though. 
Able to chime back in and again playing to stay alive for his teammates to rotate back through. That was sick. That pop flash was beautiful. It just left the vice completely blind and he's helped out Sonic to get an extra frag while he's going. Glaive gonna be left alone and he will be shot down and that is much better from Floppy. Some time, nice little boost comes in out of device as well and Modem's gonna have to help him out. Flashback comes through, he spots out one and there you go. Sonic and Modem together do take down the two players towards Ivy. Forcing them into positions they don't want to be in the timing though. Luckily Zipix only had a MAC-10, so it is just a trade. That's fine for the CT side. They keep themselves in an advantage for now. And now Floppy actually going to be pushing as well. Glaive gets his gun back out. An important duel and Glaive wins it. This gives him a path on towards the B-site. Rotation going to be quick from OC who does have that trusty AWP. Hasn't been connecting his shots so far, but that's the kill needed. Even still, Dupree is going to get the bomb down. He's going to be left in the clutch, but he may not expect OC to be here so quickly. I think he spotted him out. They know that he's still on the default site. And good work from Cloud9 to kill him off together. A little bit of support now from OC. Just going to be spraying them down. Magis does manage to get around the corner. In fact, it's OC to find both kills and looking for a little bit more. Still, though, two kills come back. Astralis never really seemed to be out of these rounds. As the bomb is going to be planted. Nades falling on their heads. And Dupree once again into a clutch situation. Device doesn't really have anything to fight with, so once we see Magis go down, I, I can't really see a way that Device wins this. Yeah. Maybe he can push through, maybe kill the Diffuser, but Mom's gonna be sticking it. Oh my <laughs> god! What?! <laughs> Knew exactly where the bomb was planted, knew exactly where the head of Odin was gonna be. He gets the first, the smoke gonna help him out. Can he go for the second as well? Okay. okay. <laughs> if he lined that up and hit it, I was gonna scream so loud. That everyone in Cologne would have heard me, but he's been holding some nice angles as well to get the Molotov down right when they need it with some nade damage to, to actually open that up. And speaking of nade damage, you see JT again able to connect on the Magus and Dupree, and Sonic's able to get the first. The double ops really doing well here for Cloud9, able to help look, secure themselves these rounds. Look at Modem as well. He's already in behind them. They, they went so aggressive in the early stages of the round that he's been able to pincer him from behind. Slightly missed on the spray though, but he's done a lot of damage as he goes. He's given some space to Floppy to get back into the site. Oh, oh, oh. oh he oh. almost had it spot on. Will it bounce back oh. round far enough? Not quite. Was positive, and this is going to come down to timing. Floppy is going to peek the corner, and that gives Device the kill. Now Modem just lurking within the site. He could be in the perfect position. I don't know if Device will expect this. He's not going to, and Modem gets both. Good cleanup, triple kill from him, and six rounds on the ball for Cloud9. Some confidence come out of Glaive. He's able to take down JT. Bottom's gonna walk right to the crosshair of Dupree. Probably can see the shadow as well. Flashbang comes through, really well placed. Bottom gets the kill. Does keep the man advantage back in the hounds of Cloud9. But then again, Astralis basically just investing deagles and some armor into this round. And they're still doing some decent damage. And again, we mentioned the economy of Cloud9's fragile. They can't really afford to be losing too many players in Sonic. I mean, this is almost a one and done position unless the crossfires are to come in out of bottom to help out, but bottom Ooh. gets his head clean taken off, and now Sonic has to be the saving grace. Could they line up for a shot potentially? No, Matt just will finish him off, and now Floppy's got to be the playmaker yet again. Yeah, they don't know where he is. That's the only real saving grace, so he will be able to find that initial kill. And now it's the young star versus, well, one of the best players in the world, Device. Could be looking to try and take this clutch back. Has the bomb as 40 seconds and a retrieved M4. This could be the boost that Astralis need to get right back into this half, especially with the financial situation. I don't know if Floppy just spotted maybe a pixel of device. He does, and again. Almost similar yet again, though keeping a lot more players defensive this time. Yeah, I think they know that this was not spotted last time, so they can afford to do it again. OC actually goes down to device. Like, Modem's on the corner, oh, wow. sprays him, and OC gets killed instead because he was peeking from a slightly wider angle. They've just managed to completely clean up what was a very aggressive push. It's a possible position he could be in. He is trapped. They know where he is, and he's not going to connect either of these shots. Into this A-site again, it's going to give Glade the space to run forward. Modem is going to be dead for sure, running through the smoke. It is going to be a quick trade, but that, that's almost what Glaive's job has been on this T-side so far. Get into the site, do some damage, find a pick, maybe waste some of their utility, and give space to the rest of the team. And now Magisk has been able to isolate JT as he is aggressive around that pop dog position, forced out. I believe by a Molotov coming in from Zipix. Um, again, they've just managed to pick apart this defense in the early portions of the round. 40 seconds gone, and they have a man advantage. A little bit worried for this double op setup, too. And there's only one smoke for Astralis to 
kind of take away some sight lines, but the fact that they saw the double ops and they're both going to be, well, now all three players are going to be towards A, so it doesn't matter in the end. Even to have Zipex pushing in towards Inner at the same time, so he's going to be able to spot out, hey, B side's clear, let's just head over here. Or maybe he's trying to draw attention, which it seems to have worked as well. You can see OC rotating back in, Sonic as well. Floppy's over towards Pop, and Bomb in the meantime, looking to hit towards Outer. That's the thing. This, this almost has just turned into a, a game of how much can Astralis bait their opposition into rotations? They've now thrown more grenades into no, the no, B don't side. Leave. No, this is the thing. In A, they just threw a couple of Molotovs. And I, I think Cloud9 at this point are so confused as to where they're actually going. They're finally going to realize, but it may be too little too late. Magis gets the entry, Bomb's going to go down. And uh, the only real saving grace is that Floppy is quick on the flank. I don't know if Sonny's going to be able to do anything here, but here's the peek from Floppy. Sprays down two, gets into that 1v2 situation. He's got to be careful. There's a man behind, but he finds that kill as well. Leave Zipix all on his own. Clutch Master to finish it off. And may actually just go for the defusal. He spots him a little bit further away, just trying to bait him in. Doesn't have a kill. He finds a kill as well. What a sick play coming out from Floppy. A one versus four to give them their eighth round. And this is why this man is said to be one of the next hot talents in the United States. That was sick. Both sound horrible, don't yeah. they? <laughs> Three famouses. Rifle spot for Cloud9. Device just set up perfectly for Modem trying to get aggressive. Glaive actually not pushing out for main like we've seen in the last few rounds. Now Sonic's going to take up the reins for Modem Cloud and well, he's going to continue the route of what went down for Cloud9 so far. And unfortunately, after that big play out of Floppy in the last round, it looks like Cloud9 will lose the last round of the half. Yeah, unless, unless OC can do one better with less HP and less information. <laughs> he almost burns down. In fact, Device is actually just going to kill him off with a Deagle. So it is at least going to be Cloud9 taking the half after what was a great streak of rounds. and a f Going for the double drop down. No one going to be currently in there. And they're actually playing super far back for Astralis too. But with three players towards the B site, you can easily get these quick rotates through. They just need to keep the players alive on the site. Three holds the angle, but he is going to get traded out. Timing. Could have actually worked a little bit better for Cloud9 if Sonic was just around that corner oh, no. and underneath. That's dirty. From Zipix, he denies the bomb plant. That's going to make things so much more difficult and continues again. He's been great in these pistol rounds. Sonic going to be left in another clutch situation, but he can't stop Zipix. Nades coming through again. The fire is going to burn oh, him. One no. HP and Glaive gets it. And Glaive continues to push, taking down JT. Completely overwhelming Cloud9 on T mid. Now OC, got to be a little bit careful here. Luckily, he's able to get in and prevent any weapon from being taken from his teammates. But he's by himself. Oh, at that time, at least manages one. Zipix going to find that trade very quickly. At least sprays into Floppy and almost kills him off as well. Nice timing from Modem, though. He's managed to pincer him from behind. Glaive basically knows that he needs to try and take the five versus Floppy instead. He's not going to be able to win this long-range battle. He's got to be careful, though, because Modem's actually moved his way quite far forward. The issue is they actually know that Glaive is there. The timing is going to leave him completely surrounded. He has to go for the low HP player. Looks for a little bit more, but can't quite kill off Modem. It's the 1v1. This scout from Device is basically an AWP at this point because Modem is so low on HP. Just 50 remaining. There's the peak coming back in. Modem has spotted him out, but... I don't know if there's anything he can do about it. Device even retrieves, but he's not going to spot him. JT down to 14 health. I think there was another nade coming through. Maybe there's a scout shot coming out of Zipex. Not just in sight. Does not, unfortunately, take down Floppy. And Device, fortunately, trying to back away, but not going to work out for him either. Four on three. Still not a very safe round for Cloud9. You can see JT on four HP. And Dupree does have the M4 to push up with. But at least they know they have a, a hard clear on the backside because Sonic's there. He's preventing anyone from flanking him from behind. And maybe if you're Dupree, you should just save the M4. But trying to make it expensive, I would have guessed. Oh my gosh, Glaive just walks around the corner. Zipex gets the shot as well. There's a chance that Charles can win this round. And Sonic, who was the safe man watching the back, he has to be the one to clutch. He has to the one to come around the corner from the smoke. Game's a little bit too high. Still sick of the defuse. He comes through, he gets the kill. And I think that actually might have won the round for them because the Strauss are turning tail and running. And that's going to be a round one for Cloud9, but they've lost all players. Able to push up aggressively again. Device gets the first on OC. There's no follow-up, though, out of Cloud9 to return that frag, unfortunately. Let's pick up the SG from OC, who fell. And again, Strauss had the early three-man hold on the inner site, too. So we've seen 
You know, Cloud9 do something similar on their CT half. And now the double ops are starting to reign supreme. I think this is where Cloud9 are going to start to struggle. They need to some way to figure out how to dismantle the double ops setup. Especially if they're just peeking like this, not able to get any of the return frags. Then it's like, all right, well, you just handed over a two-man advantage to Astralis. And we've not done a single point of damage. Yeah, and in the last few rounds, they've been able to take like individual battles a little bit more because of the weaponry that's on the other side. And I think this round is going to be that that kick up the backside and go, okay, we can't do this anymore. We, we can't just individually face a duel. We need to have pot flashes every single time. We need to make sure that <laughs> we're not just caught out, but a decent entry kill. If they can find Zip, there's a chance. Floppy will at least manage to get that kill, and he's back in this position once again. A one versus three. A flank going to be coming in from Dupree. Needs a kill relatively quickly to try and stop them pushing in from behind before he's actually managed to clear out some spots, but isn't going to find anything just yet. And Glaive straight through the smoke is going to make sure there's going to be no repeat. Get out of these positions to look for the shot. Dupree, look at that. Quick little double spray down. I think Modem has been spotted, but now he's pretty much lose his teammates left and right. Oh, he doesn't look up. He doesn't see him. He sees him now. And now his position's given away. Even still, though, they've turned it back into a 2v2. It's only really Zipix on the rotation back that could catch them, but I like this from Uzi. He's fallen back. I don't think he's going to be expected. Zipix sort of checks the angle, but not properly. And they've turned this back from a 2v4 into a 2v1 device. Here of where the remaining couple of players are. Looking for the spot, spots the rifle. Now he has all the information. That's the first kill. Knows that Modem's here. And I don't know if Modem knows the opposite. The device is still around, still knowing that he's in this position. The peak coming back in from the Dane is perfect. He hits the shot, but it doesn't actually kill off Modem, even though he was low on HP. Down to just 30 remaining. Bomb on the deck, 25 seconds. And device is going to be pulling out his USP. Maybe a little bit risky. They'd need a couple of shots to land. Incendiary going to go down towards the bomb. Orp even picked up by the opposition. You could just try hide. again. And that's the problem now. There's only 10 seconds left on the clock. Smoke going to go down, which will allow him the chance to peek. Modem actually off the bomb. He just has to wait now. He doesn't need to do anything. And that is perfect from Device. Played like a master of the clutch. And is he... oh, he's not going to get the final kill. That would have been the icing on the cake. CTs might have an idea. I think they're going to know this anyway, but Floppy peeks out. That's Madras gone already. Rounds the corner and is met with Zipix. Everybody seeming a little bit lost around these smokes at the moment. And OC's going to capitalize off the back of that. Device quickly wraps around. He's on spot a little bit sooner than the previous. And Sonic can't really afford to challenge him. And unfortunately, his teammates are so desperately low on HP as well that there's not really a good fight to take. But he gets the timing correct. Find Zipix. The device is just going to be waiting on the corner, holding for this cross to come in. Drops the bomb as well, leaves it into a two versus two. The nade could even close out another, which it will. And once again, it's going to be a 1v1 duel to decide this round and potentially give somebody the lead because Cloud9, they could confirm it here. Or Astralis are back level pegging. Let's see, OC checking every angle. He has no idea where Glaive is. And again, neither does Glaive. So a lot of time to work with, though, for OC. And we saw Device doing this exactly in the last round, peeking every corner with the scoped in up. Twenty-one health in the same amount of time. He's actually moved away from the bomb here. I'm getting a little bit worried now for OC. Glaive, he's, he's obviously going to be able to hear the bomb being planted. He's going to hear OC running now around the corner. Does get onto the bomb train, does get the bomb down, but Glaive is playing for the round win here. And OC has no idea he's coming over the top, but it doesn't matter because he misses the first shot. OC almost able to connect the follow up on the Glaive, but Glaive will clutch it out. Potentially take down Floppy. There's the first shot. There it is. Bomb now down. In the meantime, Magic's device is able to get two, and now it's going to be in a three on two situation. OC's by himself. He's ball time. That's, that's all the Zipix really needed to do was just buy enough time for the full rotation to come in. Device going ham with that AWP once again. And now we sit in just as tough a clutch situation as any other. One versus three. Missed shot completely. And, well, Magisk will say thank you for the opportunity and thank you for the kill. It's going to be another round on the board. Another bomb plant. That just seems pretty default for Astralis. 3-2 split. Wait for them to come to us. No need to get super aggressive. We know we're in the lead. They still have so much utility left. Four smokes left to help delay any sort of push from coming through. 
That's a lot of utility into the B site, considering the position of the bomb. It, it still lurked very far back. Modem is sent in as a one-man fake, but no one's rotated. It, it's not worked at all. They haven't baited players forward. OC and Device both missing their shots here. And actually another one missed for OC. He's had opportunities to kill both players. Finally, he gets one down the second as well, looking for a clutch of his own. But Glaive, meantime, looking to charge straight out in towards the outer side. And he has gained a lot of ground, similar to what we saw out of Glaive when the shots were playing T side. Speaking of Glaive, pushed out towards Ivy. Spots up Modem, gets down to 29 health. And Flop, unfortunately, as he was aggressive, does get dropped. Yeah, Modem actually almost the martyrdom onto him as you see the trade coming out, just back and forward all the way through, but it's left onto Sonic in a clutch situation. We've seen plenty of these from his side. Good flashbang leaves him blind, and HE tags him further. And it's going to be the AWP holding onto him. They have him pincered into this position, and with the bomb down, he can't really go anywhere. Does have plenty of time to play with. Trying to somehow find an individual duel, but you can see both players just set up for any sort of trade, and it's not going to be happening. A